Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, uh, today we are going to continue uh, the little series that we started on the book, The Four Agreements from Don Miguel Ruiz. And uh, so if you remember from the first episode uh, that we ran a little while ago and actually just, uh, just did it as a replay for you as well to get ready for the other three agreements. So we've already talked about the first agreement. The first agreement being be impeccable with your word, be impeccable with your word. So a question for you before we start today's episode is how are you doing? How are you doing being impeccable with your word, right? Are you keeping your word? Are you saying things to yourself and to others uh, that, uh, that you mean, <laughs> right? Are you casting out good magic as we talked about before or are you sending out black magic and allowing some of that black magic uh, to come back upon you because again as we talked about before words are power they're powerful right and so as we are saying different words we're actually casting spells and that's again why it's so important to be impeccable with your word now if you Miss that episode, go back, take a look at it uh, and, and take a listen to it um, again or for the for the first time, whichever way you want to go. But uh, in today's episode, we are going to talk about don't take anything personally. And um, I know this is one that I still work on every single day uh, because <laughs> Hey, people say crazy shit, right? And it's easy for us to feel like they're they're saying it to us. Uh, it's easy to uh, take things personally, to be offended uh, by it. And uh, so that's what we want to talk about and go through today. So as I did kind of on the previous episode, what I'm going to go do is just kind of go through the chapter and uh, read a few of the passages from the chapter that I've underlined. So they're things that, that mean something to me and, uh, and talk a little bit about what that means to me and maybe how you can incorporate that into your life as well. Okay, so here we go. Don't take anything personal, right? And, uh, and what I think is interesting here is, uh, you know, again, it's easy enough to understand but maybe you might be thinking, well, but why is that even such a big deal? What's the big deal if I take things personally, right? Well, you, and again, so this is quoting from the book, you take it personally because you agree with whatever was said. And so, you know, again, if, if you know, somebody walks up to you and says, ah, Jason, you're fat, right? Well, if I choose to take that personally, then I am agreeing with what that person is saying. And it really ties back to the first one of being impeccable with your words, right? Because if you remember there, we said, you know, when people send those messages towards you, if you agree with them, if you allow it in, then you are allowing that black magic to take hold of yourself, Right. And instead of saying, well, I put the hand up, you know, I don't believe that uh, I cancel that, whatever you want to say. Um, that usually you can tell if you're not canceling it and if you are agreeing with it, you're probably taking it personally. OK, now, why is that a big deal? Well, it gets into this whole idea, too, of personal importance, and, you know, again, I know that, that, that a lot of times we might look at it and say, well, I need to have a good self-esteem. I need to think highly of myself. But there's a difference between loving yourself and feeling good about yourself and having personal importance. OK. And so, again, to quote from the book, it says personal importance or taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me. Now, I find that very interesting. And as I've sat and thought about that for quite a while, uh, it's actually very interesting and very true. Okay, so, you know, again, if we're taking things personally, right, because we're making everything about us, 
we're actually acting selfishly, right? And have you ever thought about that, right? That, that by doing that, you're actually acting selfishly. And again, I think, you know, most of us don't want to believe that we're acting selfishly, but that's in fact what we're actually doing, right? So again, if, 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 if somebody walks up and calls me fat, if somebody walks up and calls me, you know, stupid or, you know, whatever people might want to throw out there, if I am believing that, if I am getting offended by it, I'm actually being selfish because I'm making it seem like whatever their opinion happens to be is about me. And it's not really right. Um, (laughs) And here again, down a little bit in the book, uh, another quote, it says, nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. Okay. And so I want to just pause here for a minute and talk about that because I use this a lot when I, when I'm coaching people as well, is that, you know, what we put out into the world is what comes back to us. And so a lot of times when I'm talking with leaders, I'm like, well, okay, your people are treating you this certain way, or this peer is treating you a certain way. What's interesting is they're just reflecting back to you what you're giving out. And so in fact, what ends up happening so much of the time is, you know, people are giving us what we are actually feeling already, right? So if we're feeling anger from other people, it's because we're probably being angry or we're feeling angry as well, right? And, you know, everything that people do is about them. It's not necessarily about you. Now, like I said, sometimes it mirrors back. And so you can see that, you know, if you're feeling a certain way, if you're feeling, if I'm feeling fat, right? It wouldn't really be a surprise for somebody else out there to say, Jason, you're fat. And I would believe that because I was feeling that way, right? And so we want to stop that from actually happening. We don't want to feel that way about ourselves so that people can mirror that back to us. But we also need to understand that it's really, you know, their opinion, what they're doing is really about themselves, okay? And so a lot of times... Uh, you know, like, like you've heard, you probably heard the term, right? Bullies bully and, and they bully because they're being bullied. Okay. And so a lot of times too, you know, somebody might call you fat and I'm just using this as an example, right? They might call you fat. They might call you stupid because deep down they feel stupid and they feel fat, Right. And they're just trying to project that onto you or try to make you feel worse than they feel about themselves. Right. But really, it has nothing to do with you. Whatever anybody else does, whatever anybody else says, whatever opinion somebody might have has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them instead. Right. And so. I'll give you another example. You know, sometimes I say things that people don't like. You know, sometimes I, I, I don't necessarily get in your face, but I might say some things that are shocking to you or that you may not like to hear, right? Because I'm just trying to help wake you up and help you see, uh, see better, right? And so sometimes when I do that, people will say, Jason, you offended me. What you said offended me. And I say, I did not offend you. You chose to be offended. Okay. And this is kind of what we're talking about here too, right? Is if I say something, again, my intention is not to hurt people, right? My, if, if I say something that you might take offense to, it's not because I wanted to offend you. It's maybe because I love you, because I'm being kind to you, because I want I want to help maybe help you think a different way and see the world in a different way. My intention is not to offend or hurt you, right? But if you choose to be offended or hurt by it, then again, you're taking what I said personally about yourself. And that's actually a pretty selfish act, right? And again, I, I'm casting no, no blame because I do the same thing myself. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm learning and growing just like all of you are. But it's interesting when you stop and start to think about it that way, 
that again, you know, whatever people's opinion might be, whatever they might say, uh, has nothing to do with you. Now, again, like I said, a lot of times we allow it to stick. So what are some ways or things that you can do so that it doesn't stick? Okay. And um, one of my favorite movies is uh, The Big Lebowski, The Big Lebowski. And there's a line in there. Um, I can't remember which one of the characters. I think it was the one. Um, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Says, well, that's just your opinion, man. Well, that's just your opinion, man. Okay. And so when people say things to you that you don't agree with, again, you could say it out loud. Well, that's just your opinion, man. <laughs> or you can think it to yourself. Right. Again, if, if somebody walks up to me and says, Jason, you're stupid, then I'm going to say in my head, usually, because I, I don't I don't con necessarily confront people, but I'm going to think in my mind. Well, that's just your opinion. I think I'm pretty smart. OK. And so, again, if somebody came up and said, Jason, you're stupid, I'm going to say in my head, well, that's just your opinion. I think I'm pretty smart. OK, and so by doing that, it doesn't allow what they say to stick to me. Right. Because the reality is I know I'm very intelligent. I'm very educated. I've got degrees and a bunch of cert certifications. I know my IQ is high. I know that I'm a smart person. And so I don't need to allow someone else's opinion to change the opinion that I have of myself. OK, and so, again, I I choose not to take things personally. If people say something like that about me, it's because it's their problem. They have some reason. Again, maybe they're trying to make me feel stupid so that they can feel smart, which is unfortunate, you know, what happens. Now, why would they do that? Again, because they probably don't, they feel kind of stupid themselves and they want to make other people feel worse than they do. So don't let it stick to you. OK, now, again, to that, right, we said I said, you know, look, whatever other people's opinion is, whatever they say, that's just their opinion. That's from their point of view. And uh, and so, again, from the book here, it says their point of view comes from all the programming they received during domestication. OK, and I think we talked about domestication before, you know, that, again, we're taught certain things. And, and so, for example, again, right, if, if somebody walked up and, and said, uh, Jason, you're stupid, okay, well, why, why, why might they be saying that? Again, maybe to make me feel bad, to make themselves feel better, but also they may have a different view of what's smart versus dumb, right? I mean, this may be a person in Mensa who thinks unless you have an IQ of over 180, then everybody else in the world is stupid. Right. And so at that point, I guess you'd say, well, you know, how do you define smart? Well, it's an IQ of 180 or above. Well, I guess based on that definition, then, OK, you know, you don't think I'm smart because I probably don't have an IQ that high. That, and that's OK. Right. Because I don't have to have an IQ that's that high. And so, again, you know, realize that a lot of times when people are saying things, when they're doing things, it has nothing to do with you. Whether they say things or whether they don't say things, it has nothing to do with you, right? And so again, I, I hear a lot of times, or it's you know, I've, I've been in a lot of different coaching programs as a business owner, and um, and so in there they talk about social media and how you're supposed to use social media, and a lot of times people will make a post on social media, and then nobody likes it, nobody comments, and they take it personally. OK, they take it personally, like, well, I I spent all this time, I put all this stuff out there and wah, 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 nobody likes my post. Well, maybe nobody even saw your post. <laughs> OK, maybe Facebook hit it. And so none of your friends actually saw it. So so whether people do or do not do certain things, don't take it personally either way, because, again, it's probably not their intention uh, or even if it is their intention, it doesn't matter because it's all about themselves. OK, so um, let's see what else we got here. What else we got? here? Because this is a great chapter. In fact, um, I think I probably told you on the other episode, but if not, um, 
I'll tell you again here, this is this book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Uh, it's not everything, but I'll tell you, it's a quick read. It's only 140 pages and the type is big. And so you can probably read the whole thing in a couple of hours. Um, but there's a lot of real nuggets in this book that if you will just uh, focus on a few of these, and again, I've incorporated them into my life, I'm working on them, um, you'll see a huge difference in, in your life. And that's why I'm sharing that with you today. Okay, so what else do we have in here? Let's see here. Um, another one that I had underlined says, even the opinions you have about yourself are not necessarily true. Therefore, you don't need to take whatever you hear in your own mind personally. Now, let me read that again, okay? Even the opinions you have about yourself are not necessarily true. Therefore, you don't need to take whatever you hear in your own mind personally, okay? So not only right? Should we be thinking about what other people are saying or doing, but also in our own mind, what we might be saying or doing to ourself, okay? Because again, if you think about it, right? I mean, I, I could be the one telling myself, oh, Jason, you're stupid, right? Well, I don't want to listen to that either. Even though it's coming from within my own head, I don't want to take that personally. I don't want to believe that either, okay? Because, you know, and again, we'll I'll probably get into this in future episodes, but there's, there's more than one of you, okay? There's different ego states. There's different uh, parts of you. And we'll, I'll, I'll just explain that more later. But, you know, one little part of me might think that I'm stupid because I've had certain experiences that made me feel that way or because of things that people have said to me over the years, right? And so I don't even want to take personally what I'm thinking or saying to myself. I wanna live higher than that. I wanna live from my higher self, right? And so in fact, one of the mantras that I say to myself is, everything I think, say, or do is from my higher self. Everything I think, say, or do is from my higher self. Now, as I say that, as I believe that, as I incorporate that into my life, guess what? My higher self would never call me stupid. And because my higher self would never call me stupid, I cancel it. I cancel it if I'm telling myself that because I know that is not coming from my higher self. And I want to be different. I want to be better. And as I said before, I know I'm already, I'm, I know I'm smart, right? I, 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 I am, right? And again, that's not, to, that's not to brag or boast or anything like that, but it's just the self-confidence that I have in myself to know that I am actually a smart person, okay? Well, what else have we got in here? Because again, that was one, uh, you know, about even what we think or say to ourselves was another uh, new facet for me to get used to and for me to start incorporating into my own life as well, okay? Now, here we go next. Don't take anything personally because by taking things personally, you set yourself up to suffer for nothing, okay? And Usually, again, when we take things personally, we like to ruminate about it. Oh, why did that person say this about me? Oh, my gosh, I can't believe that. Blah, 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 blah. And we go on and on and on and on. We start feeling some of these negative emotions like shame and guilt, right? And that leads to suffering, right? Because when we're feeling those emotions, we are suffering. And so the more that we ruminate on these, the more we take these things personally, the more we're actually going to suffer. And really, do you really want to suffer? I don't. And so that's why, again, as soon as I can catch myself, I stop believing and I stop saying those things to myself. Okay. Now, this was another very interesting point to me. Wherever you go, you will find people lying to you. And as your awareness grows, you will notice that you also lie to yourself. 
Do not expect people to tell you the truth because they also lie to themselves. Even if others lie to you, it is okay. They are lying to you because they are afraid. Now, that's interesting, right? Is that again, if somebody is telling you certain things, or I guess that we should just realize that most people are, are actually lying to us. They may not believe that they're lying to us, right? Because they think that their opinion is the right thing, but it's not actually true. And that truth can only come from inside of you to know what is true because everything else is just the opinion of someone else, right? Even again, what we think about ourselves a lot of the time is just opinion as well. So, um, you know, just think about that and realize that probably most of the things that you're hearing are actually lies. So why should you believe them anyway? And I think that's a very powerful point to come to is that when you realize that a lot of what you're told, a lot of what you hear, a lot of what you're taught is actually not true. And it's okay because other people think it is. They think that they're helping. They think that they're doing the right thing, but it's not. And it can be freeing in so many ways because you don't have to accept their reality as the truth. And that's a great place to be. Okay, now, another point in here that, that he brings up, and I've talked about this a little bit uh, in some other episodes um, around relationships and letting go, moving on, turning the page. I've used some different analogies and songs to try to explain this. But it's interesting here what he says and that it's in this, in this uh, as well about about not taking things personally. And he says, if someone is not treating you with love and respect, it is a gift if they walk away from you. If that person doesn't walk away, you will surely endure many years of suffering with him or her. Walking away may hurt for a while, but your heart will eventually heal. And so again, as you as you look around, if there are people that are continuing to to hurt you or or not treating you with love and respect, it's it's their their business, right? But you have the choice to walk away. And again, you know, if if it's somebody that you love, if it's somebody that's important to you, you can try to talk to them about it and explain to them, you know, hey, that's just your opinion. I'd appreciate you not sharing that anymore. Right. But if they still choose to continue to not treat you with love and respect, there may come a point in time when you have to walk away. Now, a blessing is a lot of times those people will walk away from you on their own accord without you having to do anything. They just kind of rotate out of your world. And that's perfectly fine. And that's wonderful. And I've had that happen a lot. But if you stay in those relationships and you continue to allow people to abuse you and try to feed you full of lies, it's going to lead to more suffering. And I bet if you sit there and think right now, there's probably at least one person in your life who treats you that way. They're, they're a taker. They, they don't really respect you. They just use you. They like to make you feel small. They make you a, a whipping boy kind of a thing. And what would happen if that person just left your life? What if you no longer had anything to do with them? Imagine how much less suffering you would have. And so, you know, ask yourself the question, could, do you have the courage to actually walk away or stand up for yourself? Tell them it's just their opinion and you don't really want to hear their opinion. You know, that if we're still going to hang out, if we're still going to be friends, then I, I don't want you talking to me that way. Um, can you do that? Because any short term uh, hurt will save you years of suffering. And I've seen this in my own life, too, even even with, uh, you know, romantic partner relationships. You know, I was married twice. Uh, and, and, and one of the, one of the people, uh, did hurt me a lot and it took me years for me to actually stand up to myself, uh, and, and ended up walking away. 
And so I caused myself years of suffering that I didn't need to do. So, um, you know, again, I'm not telling you what to do, but take a look. Do, do certain names or faces pop in as you're thinking about this, as I'm talking about this? Are there maybe some relationships that you need to let go of and move on from so that you can ease your suffering and, uh, and just be happier? And if there is, what could you do about it this week uh, to start in that, in that area? Okay. Now, to kind of wrap up here at the end, I love how he ended this chapter, uh, which I think is, is a great kind of tie up of what we've been talking about. But he says, uh, if you keep this agreement, you can travel around the world with your heart completely open and no one can hurt you. You can say, I love you without fear of being ridiculed or rejected. You can ask for what you need. You can say yes, or you can say no, whatever you choose without guilt or self-judgment. You can choose to follow your heart always. Then you can be in the middle of hell and still experience inner peace and happiness. You can stay in your state of bliss and hell will not affect you at all. And I thought that was a great way to, to end the chapter and to really think about this. That You know, if, if you can really adopt uh, this agreement in your life, then you can do and say whatever you want to, because regardless of anyone else's reaction to it, regardless of what they may say, of what they may do, if you don't take what they say and do personally, then you can say and do whatever you want to without having to suffer or feel uh, tied down, if you will, to whatever they may say. And to me, that's just freeing. Uh, and I love it. And that's, again, that's one of the reasons why I uh, am working on and following and thinking about this agreement all the time as well. So um, just as a reminder, you know, go out there and uh, don't take things personally, you know, because again, it's just somebody else's opinion. What matters more is what your higher self actually believes. Don't listen to the lies that they might tell you. Don't listen to the lies that you may tell yourself and realize that everything other people do and say is really about them and has nothing to do with you. Keep that in mind. Work on that over this next week, and I promise you, you will start to feel better about yourself. Uh, you'll feel lighter, you'll feel happier, and, uh, and you'll find yourself in more loving and respectful relationships, which is exactly what we all want. So with that, uh, have a great week, and we'll see you on the next episode.